Welcome to our program, I Like to Know. I'm Daniel Miranda, Associate Speaker of Secrets and Seal, and I'm in the company of Pastor C.A. Murray, also a colleague here, an Associate Speaker for this channel. Welcome, Pastor Murray. Good to be here with you, Daniel. And also, we want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sending your questions. Uh, we would not have this program if it weren't for your questions, so we appreciate participating in that. Uh, if you want to continue sh sending questions or want to know how to participate, you can send your questions to the following email address. That's tv at samtv.org. Again, tv at samtv.org. We have uh, a lot of questions, so if you don't find an answer to your question soon, just be patient, and we will get to your question once it is the turn. Today we will continue with the questions from Brother Victor. Uh, <laughs> he sent us four questions and we were able to answer only two. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Can you, uh, Pastor C.A., pray for us? Be glad to do so. Father God, again we praise you and thank you for your word, which lightens the path before us and shines before us even as a brighter day. So Father, we ask you now to bless our heart, give us the mind of Christ under the spirit of Christ, because we know that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Amen. May we have the discernment of Christ. May we have spiritual eyesight to see the truths that are lie, lying in the, the, the word of God and that can be unearthed so easily to the benefit of all. Bless us just, Father, be the center and circumference of all that we do and say so that Christ is seen and glorified. And again, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Very good. So um, let's go to the third question from Brother Victor. Third question says, and this is a very, very good question. It says, I believe that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. No doubt at all. My question, though, is why even before creation, the creation of the world, Lucifer had a problem with the position of Jesus Christ and never the position of the Holy Spirit? How do we rationalize the presence of the Holy Spirit with quotes such as this one in Patriarchs and Prophets? Quote, sin originated with him who next to Christ had been most honored of God and was highest in power and glory among the inhabitants of heaven. If Satan was the most honored next to Christ, then where was the Holy Spirit? <laughs> That's, that's a good question. A good I've question, never yeah. quite asked myself it that particular way uh, because we know in Ezekiel 28 that he was the, one of the, the covering cherubs. Yes. So he was in mm -hmm. the presence. And I, and I see that next to uh, as much uh, as presence as, as, as much as position, uh, although there is some positioning there. Uh, he is uh, next to God in the presence of the Lord and... Um, on the other side uh, was uh, an individual with whom he had he had problems, right? Uh, because he was in the presence. So obviously he could not. Well, he wanted to be God. Mm. Well, he wanted to have the the power of God. Uh, that wasn't possible. But evidently there was an intimacy, a demonstrated intimacy between Christ and his Father that Satan coveted. Uh, in the position, but not having the position. And that's what he wanted. The, the Holy Spirit uh, was not, um, how can I say it, uh, was not in the equation. It was the position between Christ and his father that Satan uh, could not abide in, and that seemed to rankle him and caused occasion the jealousy that uh, we, we see as resulting in sin. All right. You know, what we need to understand when we study the Godhead is that, yes, we believe God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are three distinct persons, mm -hmm. uh, eternal beings. Uh, God is God, uh, for the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. Oh God. But when we come to certain differences like this, what we need to understand is the roles of each member of the Godhead. Yes, very much so. And the role of the Holy Spirit has always been behind the scenes. Actually, when we come to John chapter 15, 
Um, let me see if this is the one I am looking for. Um, John chapter <coughs> 15, yes, verse 26. John 15, 26. Uh, the Bible says, I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, but when the helper comes or the comforter, the paracletus, whom I shall send to you from the Father, mm -hmm. the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. So Jesus' uh, role is to exalt the Father. Jesus testifies of the Father. The Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that is why that for me would be a simple explanation. We don't see uh, the Holy Spirit when, it, when, when, when we see God the Father and God the Son on the throne because the Holy Spirit's work is always behind the scene. He's actually down here yes. on earth uh, with us, with his people. You know, in creation, we see the Holy Spirit on earth. He was hovering on the, over the earth. Um, and there are some quotes, actually, that suggests, uh, and some people have come to this conclusion, that um, Gabriel is the same Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm because um, he took the place of Satan and, and Satan was the next to Christ. And some people ask, mm -hmm. well, if Satan was next to Christ, where is the Holy Spirit? Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I, I like your, your, your understanding. And I, I don't know precisely the chronology of how the creation experience was in, in unfolded to the heavenly intelligences because we pick up the, the, the thought almost in mid-sentence or in mid-thought. Right. The Bible begins with Barashith Elohim bara, Barashith bara Elohim, I always get them twisted. Um, let us make man, you know. So obviously there was some discussion as to whether, given the fact that uh, there was some disturbance in heaven anyway, mm -hmm. should we go ahead and do this? Yes, Genesis 1-1, one, one, let us. Let us. Let us go ahead and do this. Um, so uh, Satan wasn't part of that. Now, it was also indicated at that time that, that once man was created, that really, the, for the most part, the connection between earth and heaven was going to be through Jesus. Mm -hmm. that, that when it talks about God in the Old Testament, we're talking about the glorified Lord. Uh, who was there and spoke to Moses at the bush and, yes. and uh, who, who walked with Adam and Eve. So we're, we're talking about Christ. So it, that occasioned part of Satan's problem. Right. Um, the, the Holy Spirit was not, simply was not there at that point doing those kinds of things. He is, as you well said, behind the scenes. Uh, the, the, the initiator was God. The actuator was Jesus Christ. Right. And it was that that rankled Satan, mm -hmm. that occasioned his jealousy of the yeah. Son of God. Yeah, he, he, he had special issues with the Son. Yes. And that's why there is emphasis on the Son. Yes. Now, in the Holy Spirit, he wasn't coveting a position behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. He was covering, uh, coveting the position that was uh, more exalted, that, yeah. one, that was more popular, right? which was the position of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah he was the covering being a cameraman. Yes. He wanted to be in front of the camera. That's right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so well said. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Okay. All righty. Uh, question number four. And, and Victor, we, 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 we are, you've got, you got two shows, man, so far. A show and a half. Four good questions. They're, they're the product of thought. Uh, he is from Nairobi. I've been in the city of Nairobi. Uh, wonderful Christians in, in Nairobi. Amen. Uh, growing church in, in Kenya. And uh, thank you, Victor, for uh, sending in these questions. The last, the fourth and last. After the third coming of Jesus, since the world will have been utterly destroyed at his second coming, is it fair to expect that it will take a long time, probably a number of years, between the third coming and the destruction of the wicked. The reasoning here is based on the fact that the wicked will need, will need to re-engineer weapons of destruction, which will need industries of sorts and marshal themselves into armies before they at attack the saints. Um, how long would you say it would take and what will the saints be doing during this time? Again, another, he thinks, you know, it's an interesting, yes. interesting question. Uh, 
What sayeth ye? I, I, I got something going on in my head here, but right. But yeah. Well, it is obvious. The first time I read uh, the last chapter of the Great Controversy, mm -hmm. that I read about the wicked, that they had weapons and, and things like that. I said, well, this is this is going to take some time mm -hmm. for them to build up all that. Now, as to how long would that take? Well, the Bible doesn't give us that yeah. uh, that time. Um, I know there is someone who is very well known. I, I'm not going to say the name, but uh, I think this. I don't know if Brother Victor is connecting the first question and the fourth question mm. because I heard someone based on the first question, the 7,000 years or the 6,000 years, yes. uh, using a quote of all the 90 quotes of Ellen White about that, that topic, using one of them where she apparently suggests that they're about to be fulfilled. So he was breaking up that period between uh, before the second coming and after the second coming. In, in other words, the 7,000 or the 6,000 years of sin will mm -hmm. be fulfilled in that short period of time of this controversy when Satan is going to gather of the host. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how he did that, but uh, <laughs> that's kind of like some gymnastics, I yeah, would say. Yeah, that, that's a good word for it. That's yes. that gymnastics. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, we need to be careful not to do that. With the, with the Word of God, trying to accommodate it in ways that may sound logic to me. Yes. But, uh, no, I am not saying that this question is coming from, from that position, mm -hmm. but it sounds to me. But anyways, whether it is coming from that, from that or not, something is clear. Yes, it's going to take some time, mm -hmm. but we don't know how long. Mm -hmm. And what, what will the saints be doing in, inside the city? Well, they will be with God, worshiping and, uh, and uh, beholding the judgment of the nations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, a couple of things, and I like where you're going with this. Um, what will the saints be doing? One of the things they won't be doing is preparing for battle mm -hmm. uh, because uh, Christ is going to end this. Exactly. So we will not be spending time, and I, I say we, I'm presuming. <laughs> Amen. We will not be spending time forging weapons of war, defensive or offensive, mm -hmm. because at this point the battle is not ours. Exactly. Our, our, our warfare has ceased. We are saved, so no more battle for us. What Christ is going to do now is dispatch sin and sinners. So um, we'll be caring about our normal activities because the city will not be taken. So there's no, there's no doubt in our mind what's going to happen. So if, if you're not really in any danger, then you don't need to prepare yourself. So that's one. Two, we have quotes in Great Controversy that these men of war will come up with the same mindsets uh, that they went down. When I look at the destruction of the earth during Christ's second coming, of course the hills and mountains are overthrown and everything is, the, the destruction really has more to do with the destruction of, of people who are not saved and mm -hmm. wicked people. Now the earth is going to be flipped over, but it doesn't mean that guns and rifles and bullets and those things are not lying around to be picked up and, and used again. Mm. We know that there's no humanity right. uh, alive, but uh, the, the, the precise condition of the world, um, we know it's going to be in, in chaos, mm -hmm. but there may be still things around yeah. that, 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 that can be used. Right. Um, so I don't think, I don't see the time as being an extended period of time. Correct. I think we are really in the halls of speculation when we try to right. do that, because the Bible gives no indication that I can recall about that. Having said that, uh, since their mind is already made for war, uh, Satan has just got to whip them up, uh, get them into a frenzy, and, mm. and, and they attack. We don't know the sophistication of the equipment. Uh, it could be just guns, it could be clubs, it could be <laughs> knives, it could be spears, it could be anything that's lying around, around you know, um, that can be converted into a weapon. So we don't know if they're going to go back and get Stinger missiles and you know and mm -hmm. submarines and and other kinds of things, tanks and those kind of things, right. or just crude weapons to attack the city. Right. Suffice it to say, whatever they have, it's not going to work, mm -hmm. and uh, so it doesn't really matter how much time. But once this final battle is done, sin and sinners will be no more yes. forever. Yes. Amen. And that's what we're looking forward to. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, so we have. Uh, our next question here from Brother Patrick. 
And, you know, this is the first time I hear this question. <laughs> Some people are saying that Satan is still going to heaven to be in front of God's presence. They are basing this claim on Ephesians 6, 11, and 12. What's your view on this? It'll be good to read this first it before would be. we answer the question. Could you please read that for us, Pastor C.A.? Uh, I'm turning to Ephesians even as we speak and should have been there ere now, but I am The armor there. of God, that is the context. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm in verses 11 and 12. Right. Reading from the New King James, picking it up at verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, for you do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, comma, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, comma, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. I was struggling with the question, trying to understand the rationale behind the question, um, I don't know how someone would use this, te this mm. text yeah. to say that Satan is going to heaven. <laughs> um, first of all, the text is not talking about that at all. It's talking about the spiritual warfare that we as Christians go through right now. Yeah. It is true that these principalities and powers, and these are Satan and the demons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't know if the person is uh, picking on that phrase, on heavenly places referring uh, to Satan having place. But even if Satan is still going to go to heaven, I would assume if that were true, <laughs> is after the thousand years when sin will be eradicated. So what is the point of Satan going to heaven and continue warfare there if he had been saved? <laughs> um, so um, this text definitely is not talking about that. Uh, I think that was a big twist on the text. Yeah. <laughs> to, to, to try to, to, to make this speak of heavenly places, you've got to do a little dancing. Yeah. Um, and, and this is not what it's, 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 it's saying. Uh, number one, just to try to break it down, um, and the reason I put those commas there is because he is, he's explaining himself, uh, put on the whole armor of God so we understand, so we can fight against the wise of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this age. So we're dealing yeah, with uh -huh. the rulers of the darkness of this age. That's right. That's, Comma, that's key. Uh -huh. Different thought against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Now, if he was talking about heaven, he wouldn't say heavenly places. He'd say in heaven. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about heavenly places. Now, the Greek for heavenly places is epi, uh, epi usia, epi ususia, mm -hmm. yeah, epi ususia. Anytime you're dealing with epi, you're dealing with bub, like epidermis for skin and right. you're dealing with epi. And ususia really means um, above the sky. Right. So what he's, he's trying to identify is you're dealing with a spiritual realm. And I like what the, the, um, Amplified Bible says here, it says that we're dealing with supernatural beings. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he, he's saying, one, you're dealing with spiritual wickedness on the earth, but you're also dealing with supernatural spiritual beings. So he's saying put on the whole armor of God because you're fighting on two fronts. Right. You've got wickedness that you can see, touch, feel. You've got wicked people, people who are led by the devil. Then you've also got spiritual battles that are going on mm -hmm. in, in the supernatural realm. Mm -hmm. Not in heaven, but in the supernatural realm, the metaphysical realm, the realm you cannot see. So he's trying to prepare you. Uh, and, and the, the word um, epiousia is, is, uh, is a plural word in the Greek. It is, it is neuter, neuter case. It's in the dative case. So we, we see that it's, um, it's not talking about heaven per se. It's talking about the heavens or the spiritual realm. Right. Yeah. And I like that you emphasize of this age. So this is talking about the present mm -hmm. today. This is not talking about the future or a time when Satan is going to be in the presence of God. Yes. Very good. Uh, could you read our next question, Pastor C.A.? Is this one from Claudius? Claudius, yes. Claudius Muzimba. And um, I suspect he is from the great continent of Africa. 
although it does not say, I would say Central East Africa, uh, uh, I'd like to hear. Um, hello, Pastor Miranda and Murray. I was watching the program, I'd like to know, and uh, Pastor Bohr read this paragraph from Heavenly Places, page 151. Let baths be taken, shoes be blacked, and clothing be put in readiness. Um, does this mean we are not to take a shower on the Sabbath? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if it does, then I have sinned greatly. Uh, <laughs> so have I. <laughs> <laughs> I remember preaching in the Philippines several years ago. I showered in the morning. I showered after church. I showered after the evening meeting. And I showered again when I got back to the hotel at night. I was three showers on Sabbath. Um, one of the reasons that this, this council was given was of the, the kinds of work it, it took to, to get a bath prepared yeah. back in Ellen White's day. Mm -hmm. Today, you go in the bathroom, you change your clothes, you jump in the shower, you come out, you dry off, you're done. Right. Back then, you had to collect wood, you had to start a fire, you had to put it in a container, you had to gather it. You, it, was a, it was a labor intensive activity mm -hmm. that really would con consume a lot of time and a lot of effort uh, if it were done on the Sabbath. So these, this thing about clothes being in readiness, uh, my Sabbath clothes are all ready. They're in the closet hanging up. My suits are there. Uh, the kind of labor it takes to prepare for Sabbath these days is not the kind of labor it took to prepare for Sabbath right. in those days. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's, she's countenancing against the heavy kinds of work that would have to be done to be ready for Sabbath if you delay that work until the coming of the Sabbath. Exactly, and, and the principle behind it is uh, doing things that would destroy the spirit of the Sabbath. Yes. And definitely going to the woods, yeah. bringing wood, mm -hmm. uh, starting a fire, warming up the water, and all that, that definitely takes a lot of work, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Sabbath can become stressful doing that. Yes, yes. But today, yes. it's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not the same. You know, I'm thinking about that, that counsel that she gave about the bicycle. Back then they had the bicycle with the one huge wheel in the front and the little wheel in the back. And she, she talks about bicycles. Well, I, I remember years ago uh, an Adventist who really, when they got baptized, tossed out their bicycle and all the kids' bicycles. Um, because he said, I don't know why so we, we shouldn't have bicycles. <laughs> but you, you've got to put the, the, the statement in context. Exactly. Um, those bicycles were very exotic and very expensive. Mm -hmm. And she was saying, don't throw out your budget, throw out your money, bankrupt yourself, trying to get something that is fashionably hip at this particular point in time. It's not an in invading against bicycles per se, it's against spending the kind of money exactly. that you'd have to spend to own something that's new and novel. It's like her saying, well, don't, don't buy a Mercedes Benz. Uh, well, if you can afford one, fine. Mm -hmm. But if you're like me, you're kind of a Volkswagen kind of guy, you know, you don't have Mercedes money, well, buy a Volkswagen. Right. Because she also says, buy the best that you can afford. Right. But don't bankrupt yourself buying something that is unnecessary. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, a counsel here that is very pertinent is that when we read the spirit of prophecy, like the Bible, we need to extract the principle. Yes. And see why she gave that counsel, in what circumstances did she give the counsel? Yes. How can we extract the principle? What is the principle behind the counsel? Mm -hmm. How can we apply that principle today? Yes. Because we cannot go to the letter and apply to the letter mm -hmm. what she had said, or else yes. we would fall into interesting yes. uh, practices today. <laughs> yeah, indeed. You, you apply the same counsel, the, the, the same uh, studies to her that you would, to the Bible, you, you ask some questions. Who said it? What did they say? What did they mean? Mm -hmm. What did the people that they were speaking to understand it to mean? And then you make application. You gotta do all five of those things before you can assure yourself that your answer is correct and applicable to the, to the scripture and to the spirit of prophecy. Amen. Uh, we've got a, a second question mm -hmm. by Brother Claudius. Um, my second question comes from Hebrews chapter 12, chapter 2 rather, I'm sorry, 14 and 15. What does it mean that the devil had power over death and how and where we live life time, how we live time bondage, time bondage to the fear of death? 
Right. Okay. He, so he's quoting from the from the actual text. Yeah. Hebrews. Perhaps we should read that. Right. Hebrews two verses fourteen and fifteen. The Bible says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, mm. he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power, power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. bondage. So the question is, how is it that the devil had the power over death? Well, for me it means, and, um, and I believe that's what the text is saying, that having the power over death is, since he's the author of sin, which at the same time brings death, he claims the death as his own. Yes. In Jude, in Jude verse 9, we see that he was contending for the body of Moses mm -hmm. because he was claiming Moses as his own. He yeah. had made Moses fallen into temptation, mm -hmm. and when Jesus came to resurrect him, he was saying, no, he's mine. Mm -hmm. He fallen under my power, the mm -hmm. power of sin, and therefore death. So I believe in that sense, but it doesn't mean that he is the one that controls death or he, he in the underworld and, and he has the power of the, of the death in the underworld. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I agree with you. And um, I, I, I come to the same answer from a slightly different text. I took James chapter 1, verse 15. Uh, Satan is the author of sin, and sin, when it matures, brings death. That's right. So then he can be responsible for death. Um, Christ said in John chapter 14, verse 30, uh, the prince of this world comes, he has nothing in me. Mm -hmm. So we know that th these things, um, um, Christ comes to give us life. Satan is the author of death. He is a liar and a murderer from the beginning. He is the father of death, the author of death, um, from John 8, 44. So as he now convicts the world of sin and moves the world into sin, and the result of sin is death, then you've got to lay it at Satan's feet. But uh, we have the promise that one day death will be eradicated, sin will be eradicated, sinners will be eradicated, and death will be no more. Amen. Amen. Now in regards to what does it mean that we are, uh, we live with fear, fear of death? Well, human beings were not created to die. Mm -hmm. So death brings fear to those who are not in Christ. But Christ brings hope, yes. the hope of eternal life. Yes, one of the greatest fears I'm looking at the clock, uh, for many people who don't understand about death is, is the fear of death. There are many yeah. who are very afraid to die mm. because they don't understand it. Well, our time has fast slipped into eternity. Allow me in closing to wish you both grace and peace through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye and God bless.